Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the chapter Analog Modulation and specifically we will cover Frequency Modulation here. And the course title is AAA 351 or 352 Analog or Principles of Communication Systems. And I am Dr. Dishan Kaleem from EC Department CEO Yuga Campus. Okay, let's start the lecture contents which we will cover in this video. So first of all, we will see the frequency modulation characteristics. That what are the salient characteristics of this modulation scheme and how it differs from the other modulation scheme like AM and the uh, double side AM so on. So uh, the other topic which we will cover here is the relationship between FM and the PM. Like how can we uh, generate a FM signal from the PM signal or by using the PM signal we how can we generate the FM signal so we will see this relationship as well in the uh, last uh, part of this lecture we will derive the FM signal mathematical equation like how it looks like based on its instantaneous frequency uh, and the instantaneous angle. So we will cover this topic, these three topics in detail in this video lecture. Okay, let's move to the detailed contents. First of all, the important thing is that what are the major characteristics of the FM signal? So the one first one is the zero crossings are not regular. As you have noticed that in case of FM uh, A modulation, for example, this is your A, uh, A moderated signal, uh, carrier signal, right? So it has these zero crossing at the regular interval, right? This is your carrier signal. Every carrier is of have a same zero crossing at the regular interval. So when we modulate it with a, some message signal, for example, this is our message signal, right? So after modulation, AM modulation signal looks like something like this one. Like we have a message over there and over here, and then we have a amplitude modulated signal. But the key thing here is that only the amplitude is varied in the amplitude modulation but the zero crossing this point zero crossing zero crossing zero crossing are regular but in the case of this is the example of am right but in the case of fm because fm frequency changes with respect to message signal as in the case of fm the magnitude or the amplitude remains the same but the frequency changes let's see this is your carrier, the green one is our carrier and the red one is the message signal which we need to transmit. So in the carrier you notice that there is a, a regular zero crossing, right? But whenever this message signal is used to modulate the this carrier, then what happens? There is a, a low frequency here, this is the low frequency portion, right? And this is a high frequency when the message signal is high that you can see raises and then message signal become low right this one like negative part then the frequency become frequency decreases so we can say that it will just vary the frequency and the amplitude you notice that the amplitude remains the same here there is a no difference in amplitude so what about the zero crossing Look at the zero crossing. Here the zero crossing are very close and here the zero crossing are far. So it means that there is a uh, change in, frequent change in uh, zero crossing. So zero crossings are not regular in FM modulation. And the envelope is constant. Look at this. This is the envelope and this is the envelope. This is a constant value. This is not changing. It means the amplitude is not changing in FM. And FM and PM signals are almost similar. The right? frequency modulated and the phase modulated signals are almost similar. Okay, let's move to the 
relationship between the FM and PM. What does it mean? Here we would like to prove that how we can generate our FM signal by using the PM signal and the PM signal by using the FM signal. It means that if we have a, if we modulated the, uh, if we have only one modulator, for example, a FM modulator or a PM modulator, then using that modulator, we can generate the either FM signal or PM signal. So how we can do that? So look at it. For example, we need to generate a FM signal. So FM signal, we just put the message, pass the message to the FM modulator, then we will get the FM signal. Then the, another way around, if we have a message signal, if we integrate this message signal and then pass to the PM modulator, then we can get the FM signal as well. So using the PM modulator, we can also generate the FM modulator, modulator signal. But the difference is that we need to first integrate the message and then after passing to the PM signal, we can get the FM signal. For the case of PM signal, for example, we have an empty message signal and PM modulator. So directly we can get the PM signal. However, if we don't have a PM modulator, we only have a FM modulator available, then we need to take the derivative of the derivative of the message signal. So here we will have a m dot t dot represent the uh, derivative, uh, derivative of the message signal. And then after passing through the FM modulator, we can get the PM signal as well. So this is the relationship between the FM and the PM. Like it means that by using one modulator, we can generate the other signal as well. So this is called, uh, and somehow this is called indirect generation of a PM from FM or indirect generation of a FM from PM. So uh, when can we use this or when can we adopt this method? This is the important point. So difference between the frequency modulation and the phase modulation is the pre-differentiation or integration. As uh, you have seen that either we have taken the differentiation of the message signal and then pass to the modulator or we took the integration and then pass to the modulator to generate either frequency or the phase modulated signal. So indirect method of PM generation from FM only work as long as the message signal is continuous. For example, uh, if we want to generate the PM signal from the FM modulated signal, so it will only work if the message is continuous. What does it mean? If the message is like this one, like this is a continuous message, right? And uh, then we can generate the PM signal uh, from the FM modulated signal as well. But however, if we have a message signal like this one, this is not a continuous. We have a, some jumps over there, like this portion, certain jumps. If these are this, there are discontinuities, then PM has a certain phase changes. So it will result in phase changes and give rise to impulses. To avoid this, then direct PM generation is desired. So in this case, we can't use the FM modulated signal to generate the FM modulator to generate the PM modulated signal. So this is the difference. Okay, let's discuss the example of uh, as we studied the relationship between the FM and the PM in the previous slide. So here we need to sketch the FM and the phase modulated waves of a modulating signal M of T. This is M of T and the constants KF 2 pi into 10 is to power 5 and the KP is the phase sensitivity is the 10 pi respectively. And the carrier frequency we have a carrier of 100 megahertz right. So by using these parameters, we need to generate the FM modulated wave and the PM modulated wave. Here we will use the same method like we discussed in the previous slide that we will generate the PM signal, right, this one PM signal out of the FM modulator, right? But the difference is that to generate this, we need to enter in FM modulator, not the M of T, but the derivative of M of T, which is we call 
m dot t right so when we input the derivative of a message signal into the fm modulator we can obtain the pm modulated signal so let's plot so this is m of t and this is our uh, modulator fm modulated signal and this is our m dot t like when we take the derivative of this one this is m dot t and this is the phase modulated signal of the m of t you can call m of t phase modulated signal right how can we generate this one let's move to the other slide now one uh, before going there you should remember that the time period here is 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 so uh, to get the frequency we will just divide by 1 by t we will get the frequency of a this signal as you know that the instantaneous frequency we need to plot the instantaneous frequency so instantaneous frequency we have seen that is equal to in our previous lecture equal to fc plus af m of t right kmf m of t but here you are noticing the additional parameter constant of 2 pi why this is here because they are using another convention of omega so but their kf is in 2 pi as well so if we don't have a kf f given in a 2 pi then we don't need to divide with this term right so then the equation will be similar here we have a kf something like 2 pi into 10 raised to the power 5 right kf into 10 raised to the power 5 so this 2 pi would be cancelled out by this 2 pi so it's the same meaning as this equation okay let's see how to find the instantaneous frequency fc is the carry frequency which is given here 100 megahertz so 100 megahertz when we convert we get the 10 is power 8 right and the kf is kf over 2 pi into mt mt is our message signal so kf we have a 2 pi into 10 is power 5 so this 2 pi will be cancelled out with this 2 pi right and then we have a 10 is to power 5 mt so mt is a message signal which has a uh, peak value of positive 1 and the negative side peak value is minus 1 so for a minimum we have a for example 10 is to power 8 plus 10 to 5 so here we have a minus 1 so we need to subtract so we will get 99.9 megahertz for addition we will get 10 to the power 8 plus 10 5 into 1 so we have a positive sign here so it's uh, equal to 100 megahertz right so in this way we will generate the uh, fm modulated signal so this is the fm modulated signal and for the minimum we have a 99.9 megahertz for maximum we have a 100.1 megahertz now let's see how can we generate the pm signal out of the FMC. So because MT increases and decreases linear with the time, the instantaneous frequency increases linearly from 99 to 100 over a half cycle and decreases from this over the remaining half cycle as we have seen previously. So for PM signal, as we need to generate the PM by using the FM signal, so what we need to do, we need to take the derivative of the given MT, so it is M dot. So after putting this one, fi, fc, kp, mt, m dot t over 2 pi, 2 pi is a constant, kp we have known value, so when we put here and just solve this one again, so we will get 10, 8 minus 10, 5, 99.9 and 10, 8 plus 5 into this, here we have a 5 only and m dot t is 2000, right, maximum value, 20,000. So it's become 100.1 because MT switches back and forth from a value of minus 20 to 20. The carrier frequency switches back from and for 99 to 100. So it means that when the message signals changes from minus 20 to 20, the carrier frequency of the signal changes from 99 to 100 megahertz as shown in the figure previously. So this was an example just to prove the relationship between the uh, FM and the PM. Now we need to discuss the FM signal mathematical expression. So 
first of all we know that instantaneous frequency is modulated by a mass response signal so instantaneous frequency is equal to fit instantaneous frequency fc is the carrier plus kf m of t so here kf is a constant and message is a message signal kf is the frequency sensitivity so we need instantaneous phase so has to uh, set uh, a get frequency from a phase from a frequency you know that the relationship omega is equal to you know omega equals to 2 pi f right so in other sense we can say that theta is equal to uh, omega is equal to derivative of the rate of change of the theta this is the angular frequency so angular frequency you know that the rate of change of angle is the angular frequency so we need to take the derivative right so if we move the theta here we want to get out from this equation theta so we need to integrate this one right so integral of the angular frequency is equal to the theta so where omega is equal to as i mentioned that 2 pi f so f we need to have a uh, period here because zero t as uh, this is will continue for a time period so we will derivate from zero to integrate from zero to t so this is also like where Uh, theta equals to 2 pi. So put the value of f i t from here, right? This one. So when we put the f i t here, so theta is equal to 2 pi, right? 2 pi out of this equation, f c plus k f m t. So as f c is not time dependent, so uh, sorry, f c is the time dependent. Uh, not uh, so we will just integrate from zero to t. So we will get the e out of this one so 2 pi fc whereas uh, for the other term 2 pi kf is constant so mt we need to integrate from 0 to t so this is the equation of the angle uh, instantaneous angle in the fm modulated signal so the final fm modulated signal looks like ac cos phi so instead of phi or theta we put this here so we can get the modulated fm signal so this is the modulated fm signal that we get from uh, using the instantaneous phase of a signal okay thank you for listening and uh, for question as a there will be a separate online session exact date and time will be communicated later on thank you very much